morning, everyone, and welcome to another Triangular Talk session. My name is Shreya Kalyan, and I'm the CEO of Agora Math Circle. Triangular Talks is a forum for students to interact with and hear directly from industry executives across various companies and organizations about how they use STEM concepts and problem-solving skills in their day-to-day -day work lives. Triangular Talks will be a series of one-hour online Zoom sessions consisting of three parts, an introduction, a presentation, and a Q&A session. These talks will revolve around one central idea, the triangular method for solving problems. This method begins with the problem. From that, one gets innovation, which one will finally use to solve the problem. To help students connect the dots between classes and real life, speakers will be asked what they do every day and how they apply their knowledge of STEM and problem solving. This will introduce students to different industries and motivate them to nurture their problem solving skills and not give up. The most common questions asked by students in any math class are, why are we learning this? Or when will we ever use this? This program will answer these questions and encourage students to take the initiative to learn and do more. Innovation is key when it comes to researching and treating chronic diseases. Here to speak about innovations such as these is Ilan Diaz, she began her journey by getting her Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering at UC San Diego. From there, she has worked in regulatory affairs, manufacturing, engineering, and research and development across multiple industries. She's worked for major companies like Amway, 3M, and Boeing. Right now, she is working at Cargill and is coming up on her first anniversary there. There, she is the diversity, equity, and inclusion leader of the agriculture supply chain in North America. Behind her work, she has a passion for people, coaching, and loves to learn about differences and cultures. Ms. Ilan, thank you for joining us today, and the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Sharia, and thank you to the Agora Math Circle and your leadership here, and Lisa Guo, who was a previous colleague of mine who invited me to the session, so I really appreciate everyone's time today. And we will just go ahead and jump in, and let me go ahead and share my screen. Give me a moment. Hope everybody's doing well today. It is Saturday, and I know that this time is precious for everyone here, so I appreciate you all coming today. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide where today what I'm going to talk about is just give you a little insight of who I am, uh, the face on the other side of the screen, share with you a little bit about my career timeline. And I'm gonna focus on an engineering project that I worked on about six or seven years ago because I have had quite a variety of different experiences. And now I am actually in a different type of role, but I did want to go into uh, what I did as an engineer. And then lastly, I'd like to share with you what I would tell myself uh, when I was 16, just as a little piece of advice as you all are turning into your teenage years and going into young adults, starting to think about college. I think it's an exciting time for you all. So just to get started with a little bit about myself, I am currently a diversity, equity, inclusion leader, um, but I do have an engineering background. And just up on screen, what you'll see is a few of my favorite things. And a lot of them begin with the letter F, which I thought was a funny pattern. But first and foremost, family is the most important to me. It's at the heart of everything that I do. I come from a mixed heritage background of Mexican and Japanese, and I'm fourth generation Californian. So born and raised right here in California. Um, I love to have fun through playing beach volleyball, hiking, skiing, and traveling the world. Um, luckily, what I have been able to do and study and, um, and actually different careers have actually led me to be able to do global travel, even for work, not just for fun. Um, I am definitely a foodie. I must have my coffee first thing in the morning, and I love having brunch with my family and friends. Um, I'm also a proud fur mama where I have two little rabbits. You'll see their picture at the bottom of the, the screen on the right-hand side, and one's in Leo, the other's Jazz. Um, I also consider myself to be pretty cross-functional when it comes to leadership. I have led people, I have led processes, I have an engineering background, and as Shreya mentioned, I have also worked for a variety of different companies from working with pharmaceuticals, airplanes, food, and now I work a lot with people to try to create a more safe space for us all to come to at work. Thanks for joining us. All right, so if we go into my career timeline, I've been working for about 20 years now. So I know that's a really long time and that's more time than most of you have been alive. So I will go through a brief timeline of 
what I have done in my time um, while working. So first of all, I had um, some internships when I was in college and when I was studying chemical engineering, I worked at Kraft Foods. Some of you may be familiar with some of the products. One of the most famous one is macaroni and cheese. I had the opportunity to work on both macaroni and cheese and Italian salad dressings and playing with the formulas and finding the best formula that will work for the business and the customer. Then I moved over my very first job out of school. I went to school at UC San Diego um, and I ended up moving up to Seattle, Washington. And I worked for Boeing, the airplane company. And I worked on the brand new plane that's out there now flying the skies, the 787, it's called a Dreamliner. And I worked on the nitrogen generation system, which helped to reduce any flame issues or, or risks in the fuel tanks. Um, after I did that for about three years, I decided I want to move back home to California. So I moved from Seattle back down to Southern California, and I ended up working for 3M, which at that time also had a pharmaceutical division. You may often know them for post-it notes or different type of office supplies that you see around the house or in school, but they also did pharmaceutical manufacturing. So if any of you have asthma, I worked on asthma inhalers to make sure that they ran through the plant efficiently and that we could bring in new products into the plant as well. Lastly, my previous role was actually my, my longest uh, part of my career was at Amway. And I worked there for 11 years. I worked on a variety of different things in manufacturing, research and development, regulatory, but this is the area that I actually had a lot of engineering experience and what my project is that I'm gonna talk to you about came from, from that time around 2015, 2016. And then, Currently, I am at a company called Cargill, and Cargill is an agriculture company. So when you drive around or you see, you know, corn stocks on, on the movies or on TV, you see corn or wheat, uh, that's a lot of what Cargill does is to work with farmers to buy their corn and wheat and process it and uh, supply it to the world so that they can put it into foods like bread or like your cereal or even the oils that your mom or dad or your, your family cooks with. Um, and in that role, I'm actually working with people a lot to make sure that we have a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment where everybody feels like they can belong. So before I go any further, now you all know a little bit about my background and, and who I am. I would love for you each to either pull out a phone or an iPad and scan this QR code so that we can get to know you all a little better. And I'm also just going to switch screens really fast here to go into the mentee. And don't worry, I'll put that QR code up really fast too in a second. Shreya, just a really quick check. Can you see the, the slide with the QR code again? Not yet. Okay, it didn't share that one. I can see it now. Okay, great. It was, it switched screens to share. That was funny. All right, we'll give it a minute. When you see, when you're able to get into the QR code, great. I see people putting their thumbs up. That's exactly what we need you to do. Click on the thumbs up once you're in. Okay, we've got three people in there. Are there any others that are gonna join us? Okay, a few more. Give you a moment to get your phones or your iPads. Or you can even go and type in on your laptop if you wanted to, or on your computer. You can type in www.menti.com and then type in the, the code at the top. So either way, you can screen, do the QR code or go in this way. And Shreya, about how many people do we have on the call today, just so I know? We have about 20, including the two of us, 21. Okay, so we'll wait to get a few more people in there. If anybody's having problems getting on, please put something into the chat. All right, we're getting more coming in, Nine, ten. And we'll come back to the same little QR code a little later in the presentation too. So 
when I go from this screen into the other presentation, be sure to keep that up on your phone or on your iPad because we will be coming back to it after I go through some of the problems that I've worked on. Okay, it looks like we've got a great majority of people and if you join or you're, you're looking to join later at the top of each screen, there's also the QR, this menti.com and the code. So if you join on a little later, you can still see the code there. But I'm going to go ahead and switch to the next slide. So how are each of you feeling today? I want to know who I'm talking to and, and where we're at with how you're feeling. Are you happy? Are you excited? Are you tired? Are you energized? Oh, some are tired. I know it's Saturday. You've had a, probably a pretty big week, long school days, sleepy. Oh, well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. You're doing a great job tying in. Happy. Good. I'm glad there's some people who are happy and excited. STEM uh, problems and learning about other people's jobs, is, it can be interesting. And I think you all are doing a fantastic job being here. All right. Anyone else want to say how they're feeling today? Okay, we'll keep it going. All right. Now, another fun question for you. What's your favorite food? Do you like to eat hamburgers? Do you like to eat sushi? Do you like curry? Do you like um, Mexican or Greek Mediterranean? What's your favorite food? And if you got multiple, you can click multiple of them. Some people like Chinese. Oh, there's another foodie out there, somebody who loves it all. Italian, maybe you like pizza or pasta. Indian, mmm, Samoas, maybe some curry. Good stuff. Somebody likes American, somebody likes the Latin food. Okay, I just wanted to showcase this so that you guys could see how many different opinions and different brains we have on what people like or what you know people are willing to think about. So when you think about problem solving, when you have more people to help you problem solve, solve a problem, you get all that extra different ways of going about things and thinking through things. So you can already see here, we have so many people that have different likes. So imagine how they would bring their creative problem solving to you when you're looking to solve problems. All right, let's go to the next one. What do you want to learn today? Why are you here? What, what are you looking to learn and, and what can I help you with? I'm sure you all got the flyer to say, you know, the topics and you heard a little bit about my background. So just wondering if you have anything that you'd like to learn. Career options, good. Math, all right. Explore the topic. Not sure, that's okay. Something new, cool. And it's okay not to know. Math and science, how do we use it? Learn from my journey, cool, thank you. I'm happy to share, happy to be here. Okay, those are some awesome response. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later, like I said, so you can go ahead and keep that open. But what I'm gonna do now is actually go back to our presentation mode. So Shreya, can you see the presentation again? This says refractance window drying? Yep. Okay, great. So I can no longer see the participants when I share right now or the chat. So if you can just pause me, I would love it. If any of you have questions, please stop me along the way, but stop me with an audible, um, go ahead and speak up. And that's okay if you have any questions because I'm willing to stop and slow down. But today, what I would like to talk about is a project that I worked on up in the state of Washington, and it's called Refractance Window Drying. And when I was working for Amway, the flagship product or the product that was most popular in the nutrition realm was a, a product, a vitamin product that was called Double X. And it was turning 85 years old. Can you imagine that? The product itself had been around for 85 years, and we wanted to find a new fun way, an interesting way to talk about it. And renovate the product. So, you know, when you go to Target or you go to the grocery store and you see in the container, sometimes it says new and improved, right? Like that's exactly what we were trying to do. So in the world of nutrition science and food science, 
we wanted to innovate this. So when we say that we are making a claim that it provides 100% of your vitamin C, we need to be able to back that up with data and with science and with a bunch of experiments that show that our product actually does produce that amount of vitamin C in your body. So we came up with a, a story called the five color story, which is all about using the different colors of the rainbow of vegetables and fruits that offer different nutrients to our body. And we wanted to make sure that we stayed true to our philosophy on plant-based nutrition. So there was some new cool technology, some new equipment out there for drying that could get more phytonutrients, which are the nutrients that come from plants into the little tiny pills that we make in vitamins. Um, it was also better for people when they took it on their stomach, it didn't cause upsetness. And it also allowed for us to make the tablets even smaller so it was easy to swallow. We improved this formula in order to make sure that we were looking at the current day science and had all a balanced um, offering of the different five colors of nutrients. So you may be asking, what the heck? She just talked about this big word called phytonutrients. I didn't know what it was before I started working at Amway either. So I'm gonna let a video tell you a little bit about what phytonutrients are. But essentially what you can see on the screen there is all the fruits and vegetables that we eat throughout the day offer not only the traditional vitamins that we know, like the vitamin C or the iron, um, those are minerals as well, but they also offer these special things called phytonutrients that are additional pieces of nutrients into our body that helps us be healthier, helps us have more energy. So if you're tired, these are things that can help supplement when that you can't get from your normal diet. So um, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the video. Shreya, can you see the video now, now up on screen versus the PowerPoint? Yep. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and, and start with the video. The World Health Organization says, eat five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables daily. But do you know why? Fruits and vegetables help optimize health for today. Help support our immunity and energy levels. Fruits and vegetables help optimize health for tomorrow. Enhance quality of life. Why phytonutrients? Fruits and vegetables contain powerful nutrients called phyto. Phyto. Greek word for plant nutrients. Nutrients are life enabling substances. Each vibrant color equals health benefits. Purple fruits and vegetables promote brain health. Orange fruits and vegetables promote eye health. Green fruits and vegetables promote cellular health. Red fruits and vegetables promote heart health. White fruits and vegetables promote bone and joint health. So it's essential to eat the right amount and variety of fruits and vegetables. Why supplementation? Approximately 75% of... All right, so that's just a little bit about what phytonutrients are. And let me go ahead and share this screen again. Um, so what we were working on, the, the vitamins um, that we had in that product called Double X had over 22 different vitamins and minerals in there. And you have to take the plants, crush them up, put them into alcohol or water to extract these phytonutrients from the plants. Then you want to remove or dry off the, the alcohol and water to concentrate it into a liquid that can then be dried again to put it into powder. And then those powders, we put them all together to compress it and put it into those little tablets that you see, or into the gummies. Maybe you take gummy vitamins as well. That's how you put um, the vitamins into the product that you see when you get it off the shelf. So the drying area was where our research and development team, a bunch of scientists and engineers realized that there was a new technology out there that could work better for our product. So what is RWD? It's kind of a hard word to say. It's very long, refractance window drying. 
And it is um, an emerging technology that has been out there for a while for other um, parts of the food industry, but going into now vitamins and dietary supplements was pretty new. So it was something that we were pioneering and didn't know a lot about. So we had to experiment a lot. But what you can see on the screen right now is the main diagram or schematic of what an RWD is, what a dryer system looks like and each of the different functions. So the main feature you see in the very middle is the hot water. So it, that hot water is just below boiling. It's about 99 degrees. And the use of hot water is a heat transfer medium for drying materials that then reside on a belt, which runs, you can see the pulley system. So this is the belt that runs across the hot water right here. Um, that is different because traditional dryers are like your laundry dryer, they use hot air to dry something. This is different in that it's using this surface heat in order to dry product that is on this belt that is going that way. So the belt is made of a mylar material. So if you've ever received, you know, a birthday balloon or you see the big metallic plastic looking balloons, that is actually the same materials. It's called mylar and it has really interesting properties that conducts heat but also maintains heat and reflects it back into the water. So as this mylar belt goes around and we apply the liquid or the puree or concentrated um, liquid from extracting the, the phytonutrients, then it rides along the belt, a very, very thin layer. So if you've ever had a fruit roll up, roll up it's a thinner layer than even a fruit roll up where you peel off of the plastic there. But as it goes across here, this is a big hood or a big um, stainless steel kind of cover, if you will. It is somewhat open to the environment, but there's air pressure that is going across the, the length and the cross width of the belt, where as the, the material warms up gently across this belt, the air pulls out the moisture from the material so it starts to dry. So it's a liquid when it comes in, and then when it comes out, it turns into these little tiny flakes that look like fish food flakes. So if any of you ever had a fish and you had to feed them those little flakes, that's what it looks like when it comes off the belt. So it's pretty cool and interesting. So the unique thing about this type of drying technology is that it allows infrared. So if you've ever seen infrared in technology anywhere, infrared technology that reflects the heat from this hot water, 99 degrees, back down and recirculates it into the hot water, but emits just a little bit through conductive heat so that the material dries very gently and slowly so that it's not overheating it and burning off those phytonutrients. So it helped us to retain more phytonutrients than how our hot air dryer used to work. So that is the whole scientific or engineering theory behind this in a simplified form. Um, when it comes off the belt, it has to be cooled so that it's not super hot when you put it into a bag or into a drum um, in order for it to not regain moisture. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the actual project and you'll see some pictures on here of how we had to um, make this change. So we were tasked to use this new drying technology to create plant powders for the new product and needed to do a lot of testing to understand the old drying parameters to see how we would set up the new ones with this new fancy dryer. As we started, we first had to design the equipment. So we worked with the manufacturer of the equipment. We built it, we tested that out, then we installed it in the location and we were building a brand new location in the state of Washington, just outside of Seattle. And then we had to do a lot of testing with product that we called placebo products. So it's not the real plant products, but it's some other ingredients that are cheaper. So you're not having to waste all of the plant materials. I worked with a lot of different and smart people to brainstorm, test, troubleshoot, and then readjust each time we learned something new. So we had three key problems. We had to figure out how to apply the liquid evenly at the very beginning. And what you see here is that it was being applied evenly by one little spout of liquid from the tank that's upstream over here. But we were losing a lot of product going down on the backside of, of the trough that was catching the liquid and distributing it onto the belt. And it was creating some inconsistencies on the thickness of this liquid on the belt. 
So I want you to see another little video that I have when we first ran a placebo. So this picture shows the actual product, which was the green product, but we saw this issue when we were running the fake product first too. So we knew we needed to understand more. So let's go back to the videos. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's actually go back to the first video before we go into the problem and talk about what RWD is from another company that has it installed in their plant and they use it on algae. So I thought this was another good one to help explain the RWD. The hardened processing operation is located in a small town called Keno. As product is received from the lake, it is then transported to Kino to be flash frozen, preserving the cell structure. It is then stored in our 25,000 square foot freezer until it's time to process the AFA into a final product. Well, roughly the Kino freezer can hold a little over 1 million gallons. As we put we coats did the in same there, thing. it we takes froze us anywhere about our plant days product to concentrates well, when we had harvest. That we put them the into years, a freezer like this as well before degrees, we put them, defrost them, and they put them on the dryer. On the also, and we get it into the freezers or process right away because about 50 degrees, you start seeing the degradation, and the product actually starts turning brown. After proprietary wet processing, which includes thawing filtering and reverse osmosis to refine the whole AFA to specific solids percentages, the 225 gallon totes of algae head to the dryers. Cerule has developed customized refractive window dryers that are built in-house specifically for drying AFA to produce an extract that is 100% natural and chemical free. Our dryer is different than others. There's all kinds of different methods of drying. But other than ours, all those other methods of drying, except for freeze drying, take extreme high temperatures. And what happens is you see a degradation of everything that's good for you in the algae. So with our dryers, we're able to dry that product, keep it going, and maintain all the vitamins and proteins and everything that's good for you in the algae. We dry our products strictly by evaporation. So we have an inlet that brings in fresh air, and then we have an outlet that takes out the moist air and blows it outside. Each dryer has seven different tables, which have hot water, which is heated by steam, and we can set each table at a different temperature. And the belt runs across the top of that hot water, which starts extracting or evaporating what moisture is in the product. So we're able to gradually start dropping the temperatures and cooling the product right away before it comes off the belt. We have bags that actually catch the product as they come off the belts. When each bag reaches 10 kilos, we replace the bag. Um, we tie it, tag it, and put it in a bin, getting ready to be shipped to Avalon. The finished processing involves taking the material that comes from Kino that comes off our belt as more of a coarse flake. We'll take that material, we'll grind it, we'll then also put it in our blender and, and blend typically around 1,000 kilos. So that was a very similar process that I had worked on at a different company. Um, and now I want to go over to the, the actual one that I ran. So this is the first time that we were running placebo. And it's a little hard to see because the belt itself is white. But what you can see on here is a, a white liquid um, that we were running to try to see how, how to set up the parameters for the belt. First product coming off the line for RWD, placebo. It's not bad. What we really should do is take a sample, sample right now. So that was the very first time that I ran the placebo on the RWD and it was, um, it was loud, you could hear that. And it also had some inconsistencies of how the, the liquid was on the belt. So we needed to fix that problem. The second problem was that the flakes were not consistent in size coming off the belt. So once we actually started to run peppermint, which was one of the ingredients we were using in the product, we saw that there were all, all these different sizes of flakes. So I'll show you that quick video as well. 
Oh, and it stopped sharing just when I was trying to share. Okay, so this is the peppermint running for the first time as well. Oh, it's really nice. So you heard me say that looks really nice because it took us a long time to get to this point to be able to actually run real product and see it evenly across. But now we had this challenge with trying to figure out how we could do this without having somebody here with that spatula and having to push the product down into the bags. So what did we do next? There was also, um, so the third problem, sorry, the very last problem was that the belt itself, you can see right here, this plastic mylar belt um, was starting to wear. So it would start to be loose around all the different um, rollers in, in as the belt would go across. And we saw that the tension was starting to cause then bubbles. And when the, the product can't lay flat on the belt and you get bubbles, then you get uneven drying as well. So we realized that that tension in the belt was because the belt was wearing and we actually needed to replace it. But in order to replace it, this is around, I would say 50 feet, maybe 75 feet of a dryer. So that's quite a long way to replace a belt that goes up and around. So we had to work and understand how are we going to do this? We've never done this before, but we're not the first ones that are having to do this. So we, we went to the drawing board to try to figure that out as well. All right, so let me go back into presentation mode. So what do we do? For the first problem, if you remember on the, first, on the other slide, we just had one little pump that was putting our liquid out when we first started. So then we said, huh, let's learn from other areas. I went and I visited our other plant, manufacturing plant that produced paper products. And I knew that they put ink onto a belt onto the paper to print out the different things that they were working on. So paper products such as, you know, that little paper that goes under your bacon or um, the flyers that you get in the mail that say, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond or, you know, different coupons, that manufacturing plant had to ink um, paint onto the paper. And they used a very similar process like this to deposit their liquid onto the belt. So we took that idea and I worked with the other engineer to design it and fabricate it. And then we were able to see an even distributed um, amount of liquid. And each one of these had its own little measuring nozzle as well, so that we could adjust if we needed to, if we saw too much coming out over one side so that we had an even application. Then with the dried flakes that you saw coming off, we knew that we had to um, figure out a way to capture that and then get all the particle size consistent to put it into powder form. So we had to do a milling process. So after we were able to capture the product in the bag, we put a hood over that so that people didn't have to shove it down. Um, we were then able to do a lot of experiments to use the color. So the lighter the product, the finer the material was, the darker the product, the coarser the material was. If you think of like sand or rice and how it can um, sometimes look different if the size of each particle is different. We then did some experiments to show that the color can be correlated to then the particle size. And that's how we set up the milling process. And this is a picture of the knife mill that we used to grind it down. And this is the setup. It was a pretty large setup. Um, we also had to do metal detectors because for food safety to make sure that when you're using a lot of metal, that none of that is actually getting into the product. And then lastly, in order to replace the belt, we um, contacted the vendor. We also contacted 3M because they have many different tapes that you can use that are food grade. Um, and we asked them, how do we splice a belt? We had some people come over and help us out and teach us the techniques. Um, and then we created a step-by-step -step work instruction or what's called a standard operating procedure along with pictures so that the operators can know exactly how to replace the belt. You had to splice two pieces together, the new roll and the old roll, and then you cut, you, I'm sorry, you tape it and then you cut it and then you continue to roll it through. So it was, it was quite, an intricate um, amount of work and you had to be very precise with what you're doing so that you didn't have any bubbles along that tape. If you've ever 
um, you know, folded a present, had to tape up the, the gift wrapping on it. Sometimes there can be bubbles on the tape and it looks a little weird. Like we had to be very, very precise to not have any of those bubbles. So what did we do? We experimented a lot. We failed a lot. And that's okay because failing is actually your first attempt at learning. Then you go back to the drawing board and you use it again. And we also used experience from past work experiences and school experiences in order to bring our heads together to solve all of these issues. So it wasn't just me running this operation. It wasn't just me working on this. I worked with a lot of different people. So we had a new technology. So we had to work with my project engineers that managed the cost, that managed the design and fabrication of the equipment. I worked a lot with our manufacturing operations. And I even had the opportunity to go to China and Vietnam so that we could make sure that we we're cooperating with our counterparts so we're also going to be receiving this material. Um, I worked a lot with my process engineers. So I myself was operated as a process engineer, but I also had two of them that were up in Quincy, Washington that were um, helping with other areas of the plant and installing new equipment. So when I couldn't be there in Washington, they were helping to run some of the experiments as well. This was my engineering team back during that time frame. Um, we had a variety of skill sets and a lot of different engineers that uh, when pulled together had some great problem solving skills. We worked a lot with the equipment manufacturer and our research and development team. These were two of my research development scientists and engineers that helped us when we needed a troubleshoot actually in China. We got sent to China to help out when we were sending that product to visually see what they received on their end. And then I also had my quality assurance counterpart, that's Sam right there. This was my boss. And then this is another project engineer that I worked with in China when we were delivering the product to them. So not only can you have fun problem solving, but you can have an opportunity to even travel the world when you work for a global company. So in the end, we were able to launch the new product. This, was the, this is what the new product looks like. And the, the vitamins are actually in these little foil pouches that then go inside this case. So I'm gonna share with you a last video, which is the formulator or the scientist who then brought all those powders together and created the finished product for each one of these three different tablets or pills that are in this box. She worked on my team and she is a brilliant scientist. So we will go ahead and go to her uh, video to talk about what this product was because that's where everything comes together. All the hard work we had done on the powder form then goes into the finished good. So this is Jennifer Dang, and let me make sure that I think the volume's a little lower on this one, so I'll increase it. There are a lot of reasons why Nutrilite Double X Supplement is the ultimate multivitamin. It contains 22 vitamins and minerals and 22 plant concentrates. To make sure you don't miss a thing when it comes to nutrition for healthy bones, joints, eyes, brain, and heart. Plus, many of the ingredients come from plants grown on our own certified organic farm. And there's a fun way to actually see all of the goodness inside the product. Let me show you what I mean. Each package contains three types of tablets, a vitamin, a mineral, and a phytonutrient. Phytonutrient simply means plant nutrient. I'm going to drop each one into these clear glasses of warm water. This will dissolve the tablets and release their content. I'm also going to add Centrum Silver Supplement to a fourth glass of warm water. After a few minutes, give each glass a stir and the tablet will be dissolved. If you had taken these supplements, they already be delivering powerful nutrients to your body. Centrum Silver tablet is not vibrant because there aren't any plant concentrates in it. But just look at the color of Double X Supplement. The vitamin tablet has dissolved into a rich orange showing off the vitamins and marigold flower. Our mineral tablet is a gorgeous tawny green showing off the minerals, peppermint, and dark green plants. And our phytonutrient tablet is a vivid purple showing off the berry blend plant concentrate, which contains grapes, black currants, elderberries, and blueberries. The nutrients and antioxidants are here in full color. When I see these colors, I know I'm getting the excellent and quality of Neutralite plant concentrate. That's powerful plant-based nutrition you can see with your own eyes. Okay, so I had an opportunity to actually work with Jennifer on my team and she was, oh, let me make sure I'm pausing the other. Sorry about that. 
Sorry about that, guys. All right. So we're going to go back to Menti. So remember to pull out your phone or your device and um, go back to the Menti screen. You, if you didn't have it open, you can reshoot the, the QR code. So I, I want to make sure that everybody can get in on this one again. Do we have people in there? Let me know if you need that QR code again, if come off mute and, and let me know and I can put the screen back up on the QR code. All right, we got somebody coming in there. Just wanna know what you guys like to do for fun. We talked a lot about some engineering stuff, which can be kind of heavy and sometimes hard at, in the first thing on a Saturday morning. So I want to know what you all like to do for fun as we kind of close this out. All right, let's start to show these answers. Volleyball, we got another volleyball player in there. Walking, yes, that really helps. Playing, yes. And playing video games, reading, running, lots of great stuff. Learning, music, great. We got a... An, Musical artist out there. Excellent. Music, good stuff. Dance. All right, I love to dance too. It can be a good workout as well. Okay, excellent. So now, what are you all really good at? What do you think you are really good at? You know, don't, don't talk about what somebody else tells you you're good at, but you and your heart, what do you know that you are very good at? Math and science, that's great. Dancing, awesome. Not sure yet, that's okay too. Running track, music, listening, that's an awesome skill to have. Being funny, oh, I wanna hear some jokes. Soccer and math, awesome. Reading, piano, we've got some really talented people in here. These are all things you should be very proud of. Now, what do you enjoy about school? I saw a couple of people said that they felt they were really good at math and science. Do you enjoy it? What do you, what do you enjoy about school? Meeting friends, friends, people are so important, right? Math, learning alongside my friends, learning. You got a fellow learner. I love to learn here. Working on projects with my friends, that's great. Because in the real world, you have to work with a lot of different people all the time. Science, excellent. Math. Awesome, numbers are so important. And simple arithmetic comes throughout your entire life. So make sure, make sure that you uh, study that really hard. Okay, so that was kind of just the end of the mentee session. So we'll go ahead and get back out of that and go to the wrap up before we go to Q and A. But I wanted to put that up there because I wanted you all to self-reflect because it's important for you all to do self-discovery and understand what you like. Don't just follow what somebody else tells you you should do, but really try to figure out what you like to do, what you're good at, and channel that into what you want to do when you grow up because it's okay right now. I love that person who said, I don't know. That's perfectly fine. It's okay not to know what you want to do when you grow up. The whole journey to get there is what's important and making sure you put your best self first and you put all your effort into it and exploring what you want to do, I think is super important, but also important is to have fun. People said that they loved being with their friends in school, stay in touch with them. They become vitally important to you as you go through your life and in your schooling career, as well as in the real world job career. 
I, I had, was a part of an organization called the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, and I am still lifelong friends with a few of these people. This individual right her, here, her name is Patty, and she is my best friend to this day. We've known each other for over 20 years, and we've been through some hard times together studying engineering to then going into our first jobs, second jobs, third jobs. We've really been a support for each other. And don't be afraid to ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. It's not a show of weakness. It's actually a strength because it shows that you're willing to work with others to help you solve a problem. But lastly, I want you to know to explore and find your spark. Whatever enjoys you, excites you, make sure that that's a part of what you do to study and what you do when you're thinking about what you want to be when you grow up, because that is what's vitally important to a healthy life. And then you see a couple of things down here that are just some last little pieces of advice. I, I have operated in my life as plan, do, check, act. It's called the PDCA cycle. It's a lean methodology. And it talks about plan out what you want to do, then do it. Then you check what worked, what didn't work, where do I need to adjust? Then you adjust it and you act on it. And you keep on going through that cycle as you learn through life. You saw my career. I've zigzagged through different things and I've learned a lot. I planned, I did it. I adjusted and then I did it again. Um, and then I've said this earlier, but I really want to emphasize this, that first attempt in learning is failing. And we have to be okay with failing often because you're learning, right? When you're experimenting and you're in the STEM area, you um, will fail. And that's okay because out of that, you're going to learn and then you're going to do something differently to apply what you learn. So we can't be fearful of failure and we learn from it. We experiment often, explore what makes you excited. And with that, I just wanted to say thank you for this time and opportunity to share with you a little bit about my career and what I've done as an engineer in the past. And we can go ahead and open it up for Q&A. Uh, Shreya, I don't know if you want me to stop sharing at this point or how we should proceed. I think having this slide up is fine because it's a nice visual. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? You guys can send them in chat. While we wait for some questions, I have some questions on my own. Sure. What really got you into this field in general? Ooh. Um, so as I mentioned, I studied chemical engineering and I am one of two older brothers. My oldest brother went to school for computer engineering and I always looked up to him and I always thought he was really, really smart, but I didn't have a super passion for computers. I, I like using them, um, but this is also a long time ago when computers weren't a part of our day-to-day -day life. Um, but I also knew I loved to cook and I love to experiment with materials and see how they came together in different forms. I actually started off as a structural engineer, which is similar to a civil engineering major. And I wanted to study earthquakes and I wanted to study how to make buildings more secure for earthquakes. When I went to my first structural engineering class, I decided I didn't like it. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is not interesting to me. And so when I talk about finding your spark, your passion, I knew at a very early age that that wasn't interesting. So I probably shouldn't do that. So then I started talking to a lot of different people, my counselors, my guidance uh, counselors in the minority engineering program, and also the older students that were in the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers and asking them, what did they like? What did they not like? What have they done as internships? And from there, I was able to see what excited me. And when I realized, oh, I could work on food, food science is a way, I decided I wanted to go into chemical engineering. And chemical engineering has so many different avenues. You can be a chemical engineer in any industry because there are applications of molecules everywhere. So you can go into oil, you can go to food, you can go into um, mechanical, automobile, aerospace, you know, you can go into a lot of different fields. So I think that was what excited me because I didn't feel stuck in one little niche area. I felt like even if I tried one area and I didn't like it, I could still have that major and go to any other industry and try it out. That's great. Thanks. How do you imagine your field will be in like 10 years? And do you have a certain role you want to play in that? Ooh, okay. So 
I'm going to talk to agriculture now because now I work in an agriculture company. And when I think about 10 years down the road with agriculture and how we feed the world, I think there's going to be a lot of new technologies applied when we talk about environmental sustainability and regenerative agriculture. So how do we grow foods with less water? How do we grow foods and maintain the soil to make sure we're not depleting the soil and the earth of the nutrients and putting that back into, into the ground so that we can have a sustainable cycle of food? I think that there's going to be some big technologies in soil, in water, in air treatment, and things like that, that help us make sure that we can maintain feeding the world because the world population continues to grow and we have a need to feed people re responsibly. We can't just destroy the world by taking, taking, taking. We have to find ways to replenish things back in. I think I would love to see uh, big oil companies find ways to help us with water sustainability so we can pipe gas and oil all across the world. How do we pipe water? So if you think of a place like Houston that gets the most rainfall of any of our cities in this country, how do we capture that water and pipe it to California, who is always in a drought, right? We got a lot of water this winter, but typically we are in a drought state. So how do we leverage the technology and resources we have in other industries to be better for the earth and for ourselves on being responsible with how we use our natural resources? I think chemical engineers will be a big part of that too. For students interested in pursuing something like this, what are some first steps you would recommend them to do or any opportunities that can get them started right away? I think being here is a round of applause all, all at once, right? Joining, and I, I mentioned join clubs, like absolutely give yourselves a round of applause, stay committed to being a part of this group. I think you learn a lot and you have an advantage now as you go into college, understanding a little bit more about where you can explore a career in your future. I think another thing that you can do is um, if you're interested in chemical engineering, make sure when you take your chemistry class, take an honors or take an AP chemistry class to really get deep into the science there. Be curious about it, learn about it, and really study hard in that area to understand why things are happening. Why is that reaction turning blue? Why does this reaction make heat? Why does this reaction create cold, right? Like, and, and understanding the background of that, that's where I realized I wanted to do chemical engineering was because I had a love for chemistry, but I also had a love for problem solving. So when you put those two together, you get a chemical engineer. What are some really memorable moments in your career or while studying that really kept you going through everything? Mm -hmm. Oh, I will start with the memorable moment in school. And it's not always a fun one, but I think it's important because it, it exemplifies my philosophy on failing. Um, I was a sophomore in college, so I was 19 years old and I was taking my first really hard chemical engineering class that was talking about processes and understanding how to control processes. The professor was known to be a very tough, tough professor and he failed a lot of people. He had that reputation. And I was like, I'm not gonna be that person. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do well. Um, I took the class in advance of taking one of the pre prerequisites, which I shouldn't have done. Um, and I thought I was ready for it. And I was taking it with friends that were older than me. So I thought I had a good study group. And lo and behold, we had, I think it was about 15 people in the class. So it was a small, small class and everybody knew everybody. And then midway through the quarter, um, I wasn't doing so well. I had about a C grade and then we went into the midterms and we had an opportunity to drop the class or keep going. And I went to the professor and I asked him, what do you think I should do? And he gave me a very snarky answer and said, I would go back to elementary school chemistry because you're not getting it. And I said, wow, okay, thank you. I will go study hard. <laughs> so I studied all night long for my midterms, my finals, and I ended up actually still failing. I, because a lot of people who were ahead of me ended up dropping the class, people who were below me dropped the class, and then that put me at the very bottom of the class. And it was a huge moment of, should I change my major? Am I not good enough for this? And it actually 
became a fire inside my belly. And I said, no, I can do this. And I retook the class and I ended up getting a B the next time around. And I was better for it because I understood the concepts even deeper. And I ended up even getting internships. So you can still fail and get an internship as long as you are looking at your other strengths around you and working on those two. And don't let people tell you, you can't do what you want to do. I think I see a hand up from Joanne. How long did it take you to make the product? Oh, okay. So the new, the new product um, or the powder ingredient? The powder ingredient. Okay, so to go from liquid into the powder um, on that dryer belt, it took about eight hours to do about 1200 kilos of liquid. So it was an entire shift of operations um, to, to make 1200 kilos of, of powder. So it was a very slow drying process. So, um, but the reason why it was better than the hot air drying is that our yields were higher and the concentrated phytonutrients were higher. So in the end, it actually was a benefit and took less time to dry than the traditional spray dryer that needed more volume to get the, the same amount of phytonutrients in the product. And I'll answer the second part of that question too, though. It actually was a five-year project from start of the idea to the end of the launch of the product of the actual vitamins, the new vitamin dietary supplement. Like that was a full five-year uh, journey for us to get from idea to actually launching across 50 different countries. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. I'm sure many of our students are wondering this, but what would you say is some, the most applicable thing you learned in school and how often do you use it? Oh. Hmm, most applicable thing I learned in school. It actually really does boil down to what this whole group um, focuses on is, is problem solving and understanding how to put together a really strong problem statement, understand all the factors that are involved in the problem and all the different ways that you can think about solving a problem. So it really, school taught me how to think about problems. And then from there, you can apply that same methodology, no matter what type of problem comes your way, even if it's like in life, right? Right now, I actually had a screw in my tire when I woke up this morning and I saw it, I was like, I started problem solving. I'm like, oh, did it go into the inner wall? And, you know, I just think differently about problems because it, it teaches you how to, um, put together root cause and how to put together robust solutions. So I would say, problem solving, when you talk about those hard skills, when you talk about like holistically, I think networking and making lifelong friends that can help support you through life and get through those hard times when you think you may fail a class or when, you know, something happened in your life and you just don't want to study anymore. And somebody is like, Hey, let's go to the coffee shop and let's study together. Right? Like those that's the other part of school that I think I really gained is the value of friendships and knowing that you can help support each other through difficult times. And for each one of my career moves, I've actually gotten those jobs because of friends that I've known. So we help each other get different jobs because we all work in different places. And so that has been the other valuable side of school. Great. We have another question in chat that asks, how do you keep updated in the latest technology in your field? Ooh, that's a very good question. Um, I read a lot of newsletters. So I subscribe to newsletters. I subscribe to industry regulation notices. Uh, when I was in the nutrition uh, business, I would do that. And now I'm also doing that in agriculture and in diversity, equity, and inclusion. I will oftentimes tie into free webinars. Like if you go on, and I know LinkedIn's a little early for, for this group, but in the professional world, LinkedIn is like our Facebook or our Instagram, right? It's like the social networking for professionals, but you talk about jobs and careers and skills. I read a lot of articles on LinkedIn and follow people there because they're publishing a lot of information that's relative to my field. But um, scientific journals are also a good one. And there's a lot of free ones out there as well that you can sign up for and you can get like a weekly email or a monthly email or a news issue. Um, but there are a lot of scientific journals out there. 
when I was in school and I had to do research, I would use Google Scholar. Um, googlescholar.com also has a lot of scientific research papers that when you're working on a project, you can go and learn about what other universities are doing and what other researchers have done. A lot of them are published free. Some of them are not, but you can get a lot of information from Google Scholar as well. Thank you. We have one more question and then we'll wrap it up. Do you think AI is going to revolutionize the food industry very soon? And I'd like to add, if so, how do you think it's going to affect your job and what you do on a daily basis? That is a good question. I've been actually playing around with chat GPT just to see what it um, will spit out. And I am very impressed by it. And I do think that it will evolve. I don't know if it'll revolutionize. I think it'll be a supplement to what people do uh, because we still always have to validate sources of information. Right now, I am not clear on where ChatGPT is getting all of its sources from when it creates a plan for you or spits out information. Um, sometimes you need to may, be able to check the source because the source of information may not be valid or may not be credible. So that is the one area that I think we need to advance and question when we are Googling or when we're just searching for stuff, always ask, is this a credible source? Is this something that I can trust? Is this did, did this company or this organization really do their due diligence to make sure that they're only putting out facts and not opinions? So those are those are the things that I think chat GPT still has to work on and AI still has to work on that the human brain brings a different critical thinking set. But I think it can be a very powerful tool for us, especially in the marketing realm. So if you've watched some of the YouTube videos that are out there where people have used chat GPT, you can get a great marketing ad from just putting in a few things into, into the chat GPT box. And then it comes out with a really crafty and creative way to say something. I think that could be cool, but we have to be careful with plagiarizing too um, and make sure that our creativity is coming from our own selves. But I do think it can be used as a very powerful tool in advertising and marketing and sales. I don't know about the validity of it in the STEM area, like with the scientific information, sure, it might be able to solve a basic problem and equation for you for a test. You don't want to cheat, right? So you got to make sure that you're learning on your own and not just always relying on technology. I see technology as a supplement and a tool to help us as humans, but not a replacement. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Today, Ilan has spoken about her career path, about herself, her innovations in refractive window drying, as well as advice for her 16-year-old self, which I found to be pretty useful. I'm not 16 anymore. I'm 17 now, but still pretty useful and relative. And I just want to thank you for spending the last hour with us, going over all the amazing work you do, answering our students' questions. It was very helpful for me and everyone else. I also want to thank our students for taking their time in a Saturday morning. I know it's early to come and learn more because the initiative to do so is very important. And all our volunteers who helped this, especially Lisa, who helped introduce us to Ilan. Anyways, thank you everyone for coming. It was a great hour. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye, Shreya. I appreciate it.
and yeah, so bye!